Hey guys, welcome back to Armored Warfare. It's Jaeger 262, and I'm bringing you another news episode. I don't really know if anybody watched last week's or if this is something you want to keep me to keep doing, but as I see interesting new features being added to the game, I'm going to report them here. And first and foremost, I would like to show you guys this very fancy looking BMD 4, I believe. Now, I'm assuming this is part of a new event because every update is to put in to the game files future event stuff. Uh, it looks pretty cool. I'm into it. Nice and flashy, lots of stripes. Don't really know what it's supposed to represent or what the event's supposed to be for. But if you'll notice on the back here, this is the principal, or if you already read it, this is the principal news for this update. So I had already talked about flags coming into the game in a previous news episode. So as of tomorrow in Armored Warfare, they will have flags. And again, it'll be a separate customization option, just like decals. However, you will need to purchase flags. And whether or not those flags are going to be all historical or realistic, it's a modern game, but all realistic or, you know, customizable like these. And that's what I think this BMD is showing you is that they had talked about earlier that battalions could design their own flags and use those. And so everybody in the battalion would get those. You have to purchase those. Um as well as using flags that already exist in your decals. Now I don't know and I won't know until tomorrow if that's true or not because hopefully I'll be able to test it. I only have a few flags though so if it works like that then if you have any flags you already purchased as decals they should transfer over into being actual physical flags and as far as I understand it from the last time I'm trying to remember everything I read it will look exactly like this as it does on the BMD here so you don't actually get a choice I don't believe of number of flags I think it's just gonna be the two because they did for the showcase they did this vehicle and the Abrams and then the Challenger 1 Fion which is the Irish one and that one only has one flag but the Abrams had two and this one has two so maybe maybe not again I'll do a video tomorrow to kinda show you how it works but it's just a cool little new customization feature that is purely cosmetic so even though they look really tall on the BMD and really gaudy it won't actually lower your camo factor at all and it will make you easier to spot so don't worry about that and then you get a huge list of changes for the update and the biggest one for me here is the one that I highlighted now all this is bugs, they're finally, they're still trying to fix the reverse steering issue, I'm having problems with that, I don't know if anybody else is. Here, for tier 1 and tier 2, that's of note if you're new to the game, even though it's really not important, but if you are somebody that cares about stats, and you're new, and you're worried that playing against bots alone and you lose the game, or just playing with bots in general is not really making you look good or it's the opposite it's making you look much better than you are and you don't know how to track it yeah, um, I never had that problem but if apparently enough players have had that problem that they've changed it so now no matter what you do in tier 1 or tier 2 tanks during random battles it will not be counted in your statistics that could be good or bad and then a couple of visual updates to vehicles, get a new diesel sound for the AMX-40, get new glass for Russian vehicles, headlights, windows and the doors, the periscopes, that kind of thing. But the big one, which is the one I talked about, again, in the last news episode, or the one before last, was their changes to missile vehicles, chiefly the IT-1, and they've nerfed it not significantly they didn't um, decrease its damage or its rate of fire or um, not a rate of fire sorry the speed of the missile and the controllability of the missile they left all that alone they did change the rate of fire it will now take 10 percent more time to reload and every time you fire you're going to get spotted more often now it had it previously had a 23 percent camo rating or i'm sorry yeah, had 23%, reduced to 20 
So if you play the IT one like I do, you'll know that the 23% doesn't do a whole lot once you launch that missile. You can get spotted quite easily. Just expect to be spotted more and have to retreat because you're going to take a longer reload now. Also, the view range was lowered by 10 meters, and that doesn't really sound like a lot, especially if you're in the back sniping. It doesn't usually matter, but it does make this vehicle way more vulnerable now. It will be easier for enemies to see it, it will take longer to respond to an enemy attacking it, and it will not be able to spot as effectively. And so they nerfed it, again, not massive changes, but it will affect the gameplay of the vehicle significantly. And that was the biggest change this update. Um, on a personal note, I was really excited that they were going to change the Cornet EM because I thought it wasn't performing to its fullest potential. However, instead they decided to make it shoot slower with the double missile um, feature. So it actually got a little nerfed, but not really. They've improved roof armor to the Leopard 2 AX. They fixed, finally, the mantle armor on the Abrams, all the Abrams. So for the M1A1 and the M1A2, it was too weak and it really was ineffective. It made the tank very hard to play against. Or not to play against, but to play with. And the XM1A3 is one that was hard to play against. It had the opposite problem. Its armor was way too thick in the front. I mean, it was completely impenetrable. So they fixed that. Um, they fixed the module tree appearance for the Merc of a Mark IV. Didn't know that was a problem. Uh, they're changing how the RDF LT, that premium tier 6 light tank, works. They've improved its reload time and accuracy on the move, reduced aim time, and camo factor loss. So apparently they felt that it wasn't as competitive as, say, the Stingray. So they changed it. The Sphinx, if anybody plays the tier 10 French AFV, is getting ATGM launches reduced to one second. So it will be able to fire faster. They haven't reworked the missile mechanics for that vehicle yet, but this should help it at least be a little bit more competitive. The T90A finally received an armor buff. That was a hard grind because it was pretty much a glass cannon instead of an MBT. But if anybody's grinding it right now and playing it, they've fixed the armor, they've added armor to its rubber side skirts, and um, they armored its tactical log. So the de-ditching log in the back will now actually have some type of armor characteristic to it. It's not going to be bouncing shells, but it might protect your engine. There is just some other details you can read, a lot of visual models are changing. The assets for upcoming events, like that BMD I showed you earlier, UI fixes, um, and just little things in the game, just little bugs here and there. Now that's pretty much it for this news episode. The only other news that they did have that I thought was worth mentioning is, again, good and bad, depending on how you look at it. And that is the new My Loot offer for the VT5 Dragon. Basically, it's just a shiny version of the VT5, which was this special Tier 9 Chinese light tank. I forget how you had to get it in the past. I can't remember if it was an event reward vehicle or if it was a loot box vehicle. It was one of the two. It was an exclusive vehicle, and that's why this is good or bad. So... Like I talked about last time with exclusive vehicles and loot boxes and the whole problem with that. And their vehicles are paying too much money and not receiving vehicles and just receiving parts or for casual players who aren't able to purchase something like that. So I thought this was just going to be another, that's why I didn't really plan on covering this, but it's actually not loot boxes and so if anybody did get this vehicle out of loot boxes or played through an event again I can't remember which one it was and got this vehicle I you know that sucks because now you can just buy it but for anybody else who doesn't like loot boxes and finally just wants to be able to buy special vehicles that are high tier you now have that opportunity however because it is a tier 9 the standalone, I think, is $70 US, and it goes up to $153. To 
So it is a fairly expensive premium vehicle, and again, that's because it's tier 9. So it depends on how you look at it. The reason I'm covering this is because I personally think this is very good news. Um, I obviously won't be spending $70 on a tier 9 light tank, but if that's your prerogative, or if you are a serious hardcore collector, you now can avoid loot boxes. I mean, I've heard, I'm sure everybody's heard stories of people spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars trying to get the tier 10 special reinforcements or special event vehicles or, you know, vehicles that have unique skins like the, um, oh god, what was it? They had a Christmas vehicle, not the T-84, but a different one. They had a Christmas version of it that was only available in loot boxes as a minor reward. But the point was, you could spend almost 8 to 10 times what a vehicle would be worth trying to get it. And some people went all out and bought like 300 loot boxes for $300 or something ridiculous and never got the vehicle. And so, yeah, this is kind of ridiculous to have a premium tank cost $70. I mean, that costs more than most video games do brand new. But it's a lot cheaper than buying loot boxes and it doesn't get into the gray area of what is loot box gambling and if it's gambling does that prey on players who have you know a necessity to constantly try and get something excellent and that arguments for another day I just think it's good that they've moved away from that they've stepped away from that controversy whether or not it really is preying on players is irrelevant because here you can just buy this light tank for a flat out fee. So I think it's great if it, you know, not everybody might agree, but I hope that they're going to continue to do this and I think it's a step in the right direction because they are releasing a tier 9 premium vehicle into the French tech tree. And so hopefully this will be a trend where you'll see a lot more tier 9 and tier 10 premium vehicles for people who want more variety at high tiers or want to train high tier um, commanders and you won't have to go through loot boxes anymore so my opinion good news anyway pretty light news or semi light news day there was a lot to cover in the update but that should all take place tomorrow April 24th and so We'll see how it goes. I'll do another video on the flags and how the flag customization works and how it'll look tomorrow when the update drops. So stay tuned for that. Like the video if you enjoyed the content or subscribe to my channel if you want to see more Armored Warfare videos. And as always, thank you so much for watching and see you next time.